Hello, everybody. So I'm a fan of God of War, as you know. I know, right? I, j I just don't really talk about it all that much. You know, other than self-identifying as a God of War fanboy. I also shamelessly think that God of War Ascension was a resounding disappointment and is easily the worst game in the series. It's the one case in the entirety of God of War where I have absolutely no desire to ever play it again, unless you count Betrayal, which I barely played to begin with. But there is something about God of War Ascension that does genuinely fascinate me, and that is the conspicuousness of a god that technically appears in the game, several times in fact, but never once physically. And that is, of course, Apollo. His absence from God of War Ascension is something that put me down somewhat of a rabbit hole trying to figure some things out, and it slowly turned from a bit of curiosity into a minor fascination which further turned into rampant speculation. Anybody who knows anything about Greek mythology will know that Apollo is potentially one of the most important gods. I would say he's the most important B-tier level god. Not quite on the same level as Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, Hera, or even Heracles, but he's still roughly on their level, but that's mostly through sheer force, because he's the god of so many different things that even ancient Greeks couldn't quite keep track of it. I certainly can't. To this day, no matter how much research I do, I can never be sure if he's supposed to be the god of the sun. Sometimes he is, sometimes he isn't, and sometimes the interpretation of Helios and Apollo kind of merge into one. It's a mess, but among other things, he's the god of light, music, poetry, prophecy, archery, plague, healing, etc, etc, etc. Many of which wouldn't really have any relevance in a series as combat-focused as God of War. However, despite that, what intrigued me was when I was looking at a list of all the main Olympian gods, it occurred to me that throughout the entirety of the God of War series, and the extended works, every one of the main Olympians appeared at least once. Even Hestia makes a cameo in the novelization of God of War 2. That is every god except for Apollo, it's not just Ascension he's absent from. So why don't you join me on this quest as I try to decipher where the hell Apollo is in the entirety of God of War Ascension, and in fact, where is he in God of War generally? This is a god that can't not exist within the God of War universe. I mean, first of all, this is of course a unique interpretation of Greek mythology that doesn't necessarily follow the real deal to a T. I mean, Kratos was the embodiment of power in Greek mythology, and unrelated to Deimos, who in Greek mythology was the son of Ares. And that's just one example, however, we know that Apollo definitely exists within the universe. The most obvious proof we have, of course, is that Artemis exists, as we've seen her appear, if only briefly. We even get her blade in the first game, and of course her blade makes an appearance in God of War Betrayal, which takes place between God of War Ghost of Sparta and 2. This is of course relevant because Artemis and Apollo are twin archers, meaning that her existence implies his existence. But I think there's no greater example of Apollo's perplexing existence in the series than where this search began, God of War Ascension. A game that, while I may not be too keen on it, definitely has a lot of interesting story elements, whether or not they were necessary to the overall lore. But the elements necessary to this discussion kind of went over my head the first time I played this game because that was before I really knew anything about Greek mythology beyond general details. But you see, God of War Ascension is interesting because Apollo can almost be described as the co-star of the game. First of all, something like a third of the game is spent in Delphi, or locations adjacent to Delphi. Now, for those of you who are unaware, Delphi is the location intrinsically linked to Apollo in the myths. It's where he slew the ancient Python, who was a monster, I believe, sent by Hera to torment Leto, the mother of Apollo and Artemis, so that she would have no safe haven to give birth until she found sanctuary on Delos. But that's just one interpretation, and another interpretation has Apollo slay Python at Delphi while he was looking for a place to establish his temple. Also, you may be asking why Hera would do that to an innocent woman, and that's because because 90% of Greek mythology can be described by the sentiment Zeus couldn't keep it in his pants, and Hera was pissed. So Apollo slew Python, then he co-opted Delphi as his sacred land. It later became the ancient home of the Delphic Oracle. In the myths, people would venture to Delphi to have their fortunes foretold, although there were more oracles than just the Delphic Oracle. Even still, prophecies are Apollo's thing, or at least one of his things, and we even meet the Delphic Oracle shortly before she died in the game. And the funny thing about this is, they could have easily gotten away with not including Apollo in any way in this case, seeing as he doesn't appear. 
you know, using the whole loose adaptation of Greek mythology thing to their advantage. But that was until you take a look at the general architecture surrounding the temple. I mean, one of the major set pieces within this part of the game includes giant animatronic pythons that open the way to the temple. Plus, there are plenty of murals around the temple that depict various stories of Apollo and even a giant statue of the man himself. And once you get into specifics that much, there's no two ways about it. He's part of the story, if only in a background sense. And while you spend a third of the game in and around Delphi, you know how I mentioned Delos a minute ago? The island where Apollo and Artemis were born? Well, you also spend about a third of the game there. And fun fact, Delos is actually an island you can visit. It's a little more than ancient ruins at this point, but you can visit it. Either way, you explore the broken down ruins of a statue of the big man himself. A large chunk of the game revolves around repairing the statue so you can retrieve the Eyes of Truth. So you're on the island he was born, repairing a statue of him. You see, this is why I couldn't help but make a video on this topic, because it's so perplexing, but also so fascinating, that about two-thirds of the game are based on incredibly important aspects of Apollo's domain. And so his absence from the game, and in fact the series, could be no more conspicuous at this point. It's such a strange decision, and of course, this is not the only appearance of his iconography. The next major appearance of his iconography would be in God of War 3, when Perithis is in possession of Apollo's bow and you burn him to death to retrieve it, wherein the bow becomes one of your main items. Then you also have an Apollo skin in God of War 3, which has strangely appeared in other things as well. You got all that? So why did I go through all of this? Well, because it intrigues me. How many characters in the God of War series are mentioned or get a statue but never actually show themselves? There are a few, like Nike or Amphitrite, and of course you have several notable figures such as Archimedes. But I don't think there's any other case of a character who's fundamentally important to the narrative despite zero screen time. In God of War Ascension, and to a much lesser extent God of War 3, it feels like Apollo is such an important figure who's always standing just off to the side, an integral element despite himself. When you have a situation like that, where there's obviously an unseen history taking place, I can't help but speculate on the details. What's he been doing all this time? Where is he? So I guess now that that's out of the way, the only thing left to do at this point is speculate. Because there's no hard answer to the question of where the hell he would have been this whole time if he was such an important figure to the mythology. I would say that during the prequel era, when Olympus was largely unseen, we have no reason not to believe that Apollo was simply among the gods on Mount Olympus. But once we get more heavily involved with the gods on Olympus, where would he have been? Well, to be honest, I think based on the limited information that we have in this interpretation, Apollo is kind of a coward. Think about this. The Furies, along with Ares, conspired to prevent the Oracle of Delphi from revealing Ares' plan to Zeus. Apollo himself may not have known why they cut out the Oracle's eyes, but they still cut out her eyes, and if I was him, I would be pissed that my sacred Oracle had that done to them. But since this is a prequel, they can't have anything come of it, to Ares at least. But the fact he never stepped in to punish anyone for defiling one of his sacred beings, from what we know at least, says to me that he was afraid of getting retaliated against. So I think he was afraid of Ares, and if he was afraid of Ares, he sure as hell would have been afraid of Kratos once he ascended. From there, it's easy to speculate on exactly why he, as well as Artemis, may have fled. I mean, anybody with half a lick of perception could have seen where things were going by the time that Kratos sat down on the throne and became the new god of war. But it also makes sense for him to have increased awareness over what was to come, because Apollo is the god of plagues and medicine. And what are the contents of Pandora's box, if not sickness corrupting the hearts of man? Or God, in this case. It's a bit of a stretch, but presumably he could have perceived the change in the gods and saw that they were corrupted by a force that was not there before. Much in the same way that a doctor perceives symptoms of a disease. On top of that, he's also the god of prophecies, and with oracles dying left and right, he was quickly becoming one of the only people who could tell the future. So if he could perceive the future, it was a very good chance that he could see what was coming and didn't want any part of it. In fact, between all these different aspects of his godhood, it's safe to say that he probably is the most perceptive god out of all the main ones. At that point, it wouldn't be unreasonable to assume that he would be aware of the situation transpiring more than anyone, but that still raises the question of when exactly he fled. 
Because Apollo isn't on the level of gods like, for example, Nike or Nemesis, who were of such little consequence that they were probably nowhere near Mount Olympus when everything transpired, so if he was one of the gods living on Mount Olympus, there would have had to have been a point where he fled, otherwise there would have been no reason why we wouldn't have seen him. Now, we know that Hephaestus was banished from Mount Olympus, as well as tortured, before the events of God of War 3, so it's not an impossible assumption that a few more gods could have been punished or banished in the intermediary, but unlike Hephaestus with his involvement in the Pandora situation, other than being a dick, I don't think there's any reason that Zeus would have punished Apollo, because he had literally no involvement up to that point. Like, in any way. There's a chance that if he's a coward, that Zeus would have punished or even killed Apollo, but Hephaestus was still alive after his punishment, and his transgression was way worse for Zeus than just somebody refusing to fight. So I doubt that Zeus would straight up kill anybody who refused to fight, but punishment or banishment is not out of the question. Punishment by Zeus would probably make Apollo want to flee either way, and banishment would result in the same thing. But punishment for refusing to fight doesn't really line up in my timeline, as I'll discuss in a moment. Because I believe that he was gone by choice before any fighting had occurred. But it's another possibility to consider. Either way, I think it would make more sense that he would leave on his own volition, and I think I have a theory on roughly the time span on when he fled. Now, in real life, the patron god of the city of Rhodes is Helios. However, in the novelization of God of War 2, whether it was a mistake or not, it's established that in this universe, Apollo is the patron god of Rhodes. So I think between the rising tension because of the various gods' corruption and Kratos' continuous crossing of the line, I think that if he is the patron god of Rhodes in this universe, the city being sacked by Spartans led by Kratos was probably the moment he decided he had to flee for his own safety. He saw the writing on the wall. He saw where things were going. He needed to get out of there. And since we never saw Artemis again, we can presume that she went with him. Family sticks together and all that. Besides, Artemis also contributed into making Kratos into the force that he became. Also, Artemis wasn't an idiot either. She probably could have seen the writing on the wall just as well as anyone with sense but also didn't have the clout that Athena had in being able to kickstart a plan to depower Kratos with the help of Zeus. Matter of fact, one can further theorize that this was a hasty, unplanned, and sudden exit, because why else would Apollo leave his bow behind for it to be found by some random mortal? So either he was in such a rush that he forgot it, or he was in such a rush to get as far away as quickly as possible that he dropped it along the way. Evidently, the Blades of Chaos in this universe are the only weapons that we know of that are tied to the person who wields them, and so therefore the gods are perfectly capable of losing their sacred items. So yes, I believe he would have fled during the Siege of Rhodes, but to where exactly? Well, given that there's no direct appearance of him in the series, and therefore no evidence to grasp onto, the only possible locations we can speculate on would be the ones that have appeared that we know are tied to him. The first one would be Delos itself. That's where he was born, that's where a giant statue of him was built. Makes sense, right? Granted, that statue probably would have been washed away the moment Poseidon died and caused the massive flooding. We know that some land was of high enough elevation to survive, but could that tsunami that appeared have been powerful enough to wash away the statue? Perhaps, but then again, we also take into consideration that in God of War Ascension, when you open up the gates at the top of the statue, they basically open into a parallel world or maybe some sort of pocket dimension where you have the statue of who I first thought was Artemis, but it turns out is actually a statue of Nyx, the primordial goddess of darkness. And in fairness, I should have smelt a rat the moment I saw the statue was nude, because even though that's kind of God of War's thing, it was a big no-no back in the day to present Artemis in the nude. In stories, she killed multiple people who saw her bathe, and even turned a hero named Saproites into a woman in what was probably one of the ancient world's earliest examples of transgenderism. And while the myth itself has been mostly lost to time, it's believed that she did that out of pity because the rule about seeing her nude was specifically aimed at men, and since it was a mistake, she didn't want to punish him too hard. Anyways, I got off topic. So if one can presume that the other side of this portal is sort of a pocket dimension, that could probably keep a couple of gods safe, even while the world is literally falling apart. But then, if the statue and therefore the portal is washed away, would they be able to get back through to the normal world once things have smoothed over? Kinda like in Dragon Ball Z, when Piccolo destroys the doors to the hyperbolic time chamber, trapping everyone inside. And no, I've never watched it, I just have a friend who's a walking, talking DBZ encyclopedia who will let me know about this. If that happened, how would they be able to get out? Would they be able to get out? 
Well, presumably, since we still haven't seen them, they're probably still trapped inside if this is the case. Otherwise, it's possible that the statue is still intact, or maybe they did make it out slash have the ability to make it out, and in that case are just wandering around aimlessly now in the ruins of Greece. But if Apollo could perceive the future, would he be able to predict this happening? Would they have done it anyway because it was the safest bet? Did he go into it knowing there was a way out? Who knows? Really, the possibilities are open-ended. Perhaps we haven't seen the last of them. Now, the only other possible place they could have fled to that would have been relevant would be Delphi itself. And it's entirely possible that Delphi was high enough to be able to survive the floods that transpired when Poseidon was killed. Apparently, the maximum elevation within the city of Delphi is about 1,940 feet above sea level, which pales in comparison to the real-life Mount Olympus, which is about 9,570 feet above sea level, but looking at the sea level rise in the game, I doubt it rose more than 1,000 feet. Hell, a lot of the ground we see is still above the ocean, so it's very likely that Delphi could have survived the floods as well. Plus, there are plenty of tunnels and caves to hide out in. The humans there probably died, but there's no reason that, it being a sacred place for Apollo, that he couldn't hide out there for a couple of years until things blew over. Are there any other relevant spots he could have fled to otherwise? Well, nothing immediately comes to mind. He could have been safe in the Underworld, which might make sense for why his bow made it to the Underworld. But we pretty thoroughly explore the Underworld. I think we'd have seen him. He could have very well fled the entire region altogether, taking the safe bet of knowing that the further he gets away from the conflict, the better. And I see no reason why both the Bowmasters can't still be alive and kicking somewhere, whether they're dwelling in the ruins of ancient Greece or have moved on to pastures new. In fact, one idea I've heard proposed is that if they ever made an Atreus slash Loki spinoff, it would make sense for Apollo and Artemis to be involved in that because thematically they're all bow users. So I think it would make sense. How would it all go down? Well, that would get into the realms of fanfiction, so I don't feel the desire to give my own pitch. Although I'm pretty much down for whatever in that regard. It would be pretty interesting for Atreus to meet a couple of Greek gods to more thoroughly come to understand what Kratos did. So I'd be down with that, so long as Artemis doesn't beat Kratos in the head with a golf club. Alright, so with that said, I want to hear your theories. Where the hell has Apollo been all this time? Let me know in the comment section. Did I mess up any details that might point me in the right direction? I want to hear it. And while you're there, I'd appreciate it if you supported this video by leaving me a like, subscribing, and hitting the notification icon so you're always up to date on what I'm doing. And if you want to support the channel in a more direct fashion, you can pledge to my Patreon for unique perks and rewards such as early access, Discord benefits, and exclusive content along with these fine folks right here. And an extra special thank you to Andrew Ritter, Brooklyn, Dick Kickham, Ga004, My Name is Tank, Monsieur Tenadier, Patchwork, Raf, Ranger X, and Weird Webster for going above and beyond. Elsewise than that, I've been the King of Snark Style right here on Tactical Bacon Productions, and I will see you next time. Stay crispy, my friends.